10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! <laughs> there Hi, he is. I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Hey, Chris. Thanks for joining us for today's live stream as we unveil Path of Exile <laughs> Crucible, which launches on April 7th on PC and Mac and on April 12th on console. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream, so make sure you follow the oh, instructions below wings? in order to claim your Sphinx wings. Sphinx wings. <laughs> Speaking of live streams, <laughs> this is our last dedicated Path of Exile 1 announcement stream for around six months. Whoa. That's because our 322 expansion announcement will occur during the ExileCon live stream at late ah, okay. July. Set okay. yourself a reminder to tune in, because we'll also be unveiling massive amounts of information about Path of Exile 2. Oh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. the date that its beta will start. That's going to be interesting. Okay, back to today's live stream. Ooh. Here's what you can expect. We'll start with a trailer for Crucible, followed by a deep dive on the League itself. Then we'll cover this expansion's endgame improvements, including the introduction of Atlas Gateways and revamps to both Breach and Abyss Leagues. Okay. We'll discuss changes to Path of Exile's balance metagame, including changes to the passive skill tree, its masteries, an overhaul of the Saboteur what? and Pathfinder Ascendancy classes, nine powerful new Val skills, oh, and wow. some of the new unique items you can build around. After that, we'll cover improvements to the Ruthless game mode and the League Launch Boss Kill event oh, before what? diving into the new supporter pack series. The live stream will then conclude with a Q&A session between Ziggy D and me, where we'll answer questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. Yeah, I don't know Let's if I stick around for the, the Q&A, but let's see about the trailer. Hail, one of many. Eons ago, my kind walked the molten surface of this world. Now, we seek a champion. For what? Whoa. You must enjoy oh, wow. the heat of the crucible. Forge weapons unlike any Raycast has ever seen. Oh. Interesting. Whoa. 50%? Increased restoration? That's a lot. And bring obliteration. Wow. I mean. Oh, that's a cool fire rain. A meteor, the meteor rain. Abyss rework? Okay. And breach. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, the Pathfinder is getting a rework. And Saboteur. Okay. Hmm. I didn't play the saboteur because I'm not into traps, but Pathfinder is actually, I think Pathfinder is really cool. How she is right now. Let's see. In Path of Exile Crucible, you'll learn about an ancient race of titans who once shaped the primordial surface of Rayclast. Hmm. In this league, you will earn the ability to forge their power onto your weapons. And what form does that power take? In an iconically Path of Exile way, it's the ability to imbue your weapons with their own passive skill trees. What? Oh my These God. crucible trees can have quite an impact on your character build. Yeah. For example, <laughs> in addition to the regular mods on this bow, its crucible tree grants additional physical damage, physical to chaos conversion, the Master Fletcher notable passive, what? improved grace effect, and level 10 lesser multiple projectiles. Oh, what the fuck? This is certainly a decent tree to get. It's not even the maximum depth and could be even more optimized for your build. That's crazy. In order to forge these powerful trees onto your weapons, you'll need to complete crucible encounters. There's one in each area. Each encounter like takes always. place at a crucible forge. As you approach the forge, you'll have the choice of which of your equipped weapons you want to focus on. This can include ones on your alternate weapon swap if you want to improve ah. one you're not currently using. After selecting a weapon, you channel it at the Crucible Forge to spawn monsters. The longer you channel for, the more dangerous okay. and rewarding the encounter becomes. 
As you spawn additional monsters, they combine together to create larger and more fearsome foes that grant even more experience for your Crucible passive tree. Being able to ramp up the difficulty of the encounters is a double-edged sword. <laughs> yeah. While it gives you the opportunity to make rapid progress on your Crucible wow. and crafting projects, it comes with significant risk to your character. It's easy to accidentally overwhelm yourself and make an encounter that is too dangerous. Channel carefully and adapt to what your character is capable of. When you first find a weapon, it doesn't have a crucible tree unlocked. Channeling that weapon at crucible encounters will unlock and reveal its tree ah, okay. as well as allocating the first skill. You can only allocate one skill at each tree depth, so you'll need to decide which path through the tree is best for your build. Hmm. As you get deeper into a tree, more and more experience is required to unlock skills. Yeah, of the course. Final depths can take quite an investment and can only be found rarely on endgame items, but also have some of the most powerful properties. <laughs> example, like always. This wand has two depth five skills to choose from. One of them allows all damage from your freezing pulse and eye of winter skills to poison. Whoa, and the other what? allows various brands to be attached to your summoned reaper. There oh, are many wow. such modifiers to skills that will enable very interesting build combinations. Yeah, absolutely. That's In crazy. To all types of weapons, shields can also be empowered with their own crucible trees. Oh. Here's a relatively simple low level example. It gets a bit crazier as you approach the end game. Yeah, I guess so. Speaking of the end game, in endgame crucible encounters, you'll occasionally find igneous geodes, currency items that can oh, be no. <laughs> open to reveal a primeval remnant. Another. This is a map-like item that grants access to the Forge of the Titans, oh. the culmination of your crucible journey. These primeval remnants always generate as rare items. Half of their mods are upsides and half are downsides. Hmm. The upsides generally increase the rewards of the area or add special crafting options. For example, causing monsters to drop divination cards or magmatic ore a form of tradable, itemized Crucible tree experience. The downsides are quite punitive compared to most in-game maps. Ideally, you want to find a primeval remnant that is really rewarding upsides alongside downsides yeah, you can handle. Of course. If you don't think you'll I survive mean... a visit to the Forge <laughs> of the Titans, trade the remnant away to someone else and gamble on cracking open another geode. If you survive and manage to reach the end of the area, you'll find the aforementioned Forge, which allows you to merge crucible trees on two items together. Oh, what? The way this process works is that you provide two items of the same class. For example, a pair of bows, a pair of shields, or a pair of one-hand axes. One of these items will be melted down and applied to the other, which will keep its regular properties. Their crucible trees will be merged together in an unpredictable way, taking elements oh. of each one. Oh. This is a little reminiscent of how recombinators apply to item mods, taking parts of each crucible tree and merging them together. That's a huge gamble. Downgrading or mutating skills on the resultant tree. Yeah. While this process can create some really powerful trees, if you get skills you wanted from both items, it can also completely wreck your precious trees. Yeah, it's so take care choosing which you risk combining. It's like Val orbs a little bit. It's a huge gamble. Also, Again, like recombinators, more grinding. There are ways to manipulate mm. the system to improve your odds at getting certain outcomes. For example, any skills that have been allocated are more likely to show up in the resultant crucible tree. Okay. By default, you can only add crucible trees to non-unique items. Hmm. But it's possible to get a mod on the Forge of the Titans map that allows you to imbue a unique item with a crucible tree, which Ooh. can then be leveled up via regular crucible encounters. That's even crazier. To combine crucible <laughs> trees and unique <laughs> items together, you'll want to find a crystalline geode and crack it open to reveal the secret higher level version of the Forge of the Titans. What? I probably shouldn't say too much about it. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Interesting things with crucible trees. <laughs> Don't tell us everything, please. There's an important please. thing to note about crucible trees on unique weapons. In addition to being much harder to unlock, there's a special rule about how they can be combined. A unique weapon must be combined with another copy of the same unique weapon to oh, that's their crazy. trees together. That's crazy. Because this destroys one copy, getting a good crucible tree on a unique weapon makes it insanely valuable. Yeah. It may also raise the trade <laughs> value of all unique weapons by quite a lot, as players sacrifice them trying to create perfect crucible oh, trees. Oh, shit. Occasionally, you'll find a crucible passive skill tree with a special skill that indicates that the item will sell to vendors for a specific item in addition to its regular sale price. These vendor skills usually occur relatively deeply in the tree, so take some effort to allocate, but usually don't block skill choices you'd make when oh. leveling the item up for use. The presence of these skills presents you with an interesting choice about whether you want to use the item or sell it to a vendor, hmm. and whether you want to spend your crucible experience either revealing new trees to hunt for good skills leveling up items to use or leveling up items to sell crucible also features a ah. unique items you can earn 
Cool. For example, El Abin's visage, a unique helmet, is special in that it's the only armor piece other than shields that can receive crucible passive skill trees. Oh, wow. Wearing the stats are not bad as well. Certain properties that are only available through these trees. Hmm. There are several other unique items exclusive to Crucible for you to discover in this league. Crucible is a dual combat crafting league with a focus on encounter difficulty scaling and deep weapon customization with a power level that we have never seen before. It's doubt, deep weapon gambling, most powerful to be honest. Be forged in Crucible. We can't wait to for see the end game. To create. Yeah. Like all recent Path that of Exiles crazy, Crucible crazy includes builds a lot of that. changes with the goal of improving Path of Exile's endgame. One area we wanted to address was mobility on the Atlas Passive Tree. Often, you'll find yourself in a situation where you want to specialize in leagues that are on entirely different sides of the Atlas Tree. Or maybe you want to focus on the type of altar that isn't near the leagues you have picked. To solve this, Path of Exile Crucible introduces Atlas Gateways. Ah, it's like a portal. You can allocate on yeah, the tree you can that skill through that. Travel between two locations. That's cool. There are three pairs of gateways, each allowing travel from the left side of the tree to the right side, or vice versa. Hmm. Each end of the gateway consumes one Atlas skill point to allocate, but will potentially save you large amounts of travel points. Yeah, that's that's really good. That's a really good idea. In this expansion, we're targeting a couple of endgame leagues, and I think that's actually needed. Leagues on the Atlas tree. Let's start with Breach. In the live version of Path of Exile, there are five tiers of Breach Stone. In Path of Exile Crucible, we're raising the area levels of Breach Stones to a much higher baseline level. 81 for Elemental Ones, 82 Whoa. for Physical, and 83 for Chaos. Now that the regular Breach Stones are much higher level, we have retired, charged, enriched, and pure Breach Stones. They will be converted to regular ones. Okay. We have also changed how flawless Breach Stones are acquired. Previously, you could only get them from Maven invitations, but we prefer access to the hardest breach content to actually come from playing breach. I didn't access now there that. Are two ways to get flawless breach stones: through blessings, which are now rarer as a result, and through a skill on the Atlas tree. Ah. Oh. We've also improved the pacing of breach encounters. Previously, breaches felt pretty good early on, but quickly tapered off in density to the point where you wanted to abandon the breach because yeah. it just felt like not enough monsters were spawning. Yeah, absolutely. Our changes now keep breaches feeling dense throughout, leaning more on the side of it feeling overwhelming towards the end of the breach. Okay. We have also reduced the duration of breaches so there is constant monster pressure and you can get on with your mapping sooner. That's good. There are a whole bunch of other breach changes that you can read about in the patch notes, okay. such as changes to the Betrayal Research Safe House, Breach Scarabs, Breach Stones from Kirik missions, oh the God. Breach Harvest Crafting option, the Fragment Stash Tab, Divination Cards, Breach Unique Items, Atlas Passives, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> We're also revamping Abyss in a similar way. Abyssal Depths now always contain an Abyssal Lich. Previously, the prevailing gameplay was to check the loading screen art of an Abyssal Depths to see if it contained a Lich, and bail out if it didn't. Now, the Depths always contain a Lich, removing the need for this step. I didn't find an Abyssal Lich While the rate of Lich encountering Abyssal yet. Liches is unchanged, Abyssal Depths are rarer than before. However, Abysses now have a chance to spawn a Stygian Spire in place of their reward chest, oh. which will drop all of the jewels and other items you'd normally receive, as well as a Stygian Vice. In addition, you're guaranteed to always get a four-hole Abyss alongside your Abyssal Depths. Cool. Previously, Abyssal Depths could only spawn immediately after a single Abyssal Hole, which prevented you from getting full value from the Abyss. Hmm. The Lightless Legion notable passive has been replaced with a new skill which grants Stitch and Spires in your maps drop items with plus one to item level. Oh wow, that's this cool. Is that's to really good. To continue to be able to obtain item level 86 Stitch and Vices and other base types as a reward for specializing in Abyss. The small passives leading up to this notable passive have also been replaced. Hmm. We've done a balanced pass on Abyssal Lich encounters to make them more appropriately difficult relative to the current standard of endgame encounters. Abyss Uniques have had some balanced attention also, and the details are in the patch notes. Overall, these changes should ensure you can play a wider variety of leagues in the endgame, both through being able to access them more easily and because Breach and Abyss now feel far more modern and competitive with other popular league content. Okay. A big goal of the Crucible expansion is to provide a lot of new ways to build characters and to breathe new life into older builds. To achieve this, we're doing two <laughs> His eyes. Firstly, we have created many more interesting options for one of Path of Exile's core build systems, the Passive Skill Tree, by overhauling many of its masteries. Okay. Secondly, we have revamped two specific Ascendancy classes. As we reviewed the masteries on Path of Exile's Passive Skill Tree, we realized that a lot of the choices were rather bland and could be a lot more exciting. We went through the masteries oh, I don't one know. one and tried to come up with as many interesting stats as we could, ignoring what was currently there. Hmm. 
Once we had a short list of high quality stats, we added in the existing ones that used to be on each mastery and picked the six best. All of the leftover ones have been saved for later or used in places like unique items. This process was performed oh. on approximately half of the masteries on the tree, initially targeting what? the ones that needed the attention the most. Previously, some masteries only had four options, so we've tried to increase as many as possible to six. Yeah, options. some of them were we really bad. A couple of new That's true. Types that we felt were missing. Let's look at an example, the life mastery choices. You can see some of the interesting new options, such as the ability to manipulate your low life and full life thresholds. Oh. Which allows you to more effectively use the damage while on full life support gem and maybe... Uh, yeah, not only that. That Using changes a lot. Maximum life when you have no life on your body armor not only works really well with a whole lot of unique items, oh, but wow. also opens up new prefix composition options for rare body armor. Yeah, absolutely. Here you can see the armor and energy shield mastery has more options available than before. The other thing we focused on with this one is tying the mechanics together better. Instead of some being about armor and some being about energy shield, we've tried to make sure each really emphasizes having both armor and energy shield. This was a really bad mastery before. On the leech mastery, we've combined the three increased life, mana, energy shield, oh. recovery stats into one choice that affects That's a good idea. Them. The space we've freed up has been used to add some powerful new options, such as a portion of your leech applying instantly. Oh, great. That's great. The spell suppression mastery also has many <laughs> interesting options. It's insane. Your chance to suppress spell damage becoming lucky is extremely useful before you've optimized your gear Whoa. and haven't reached 100% yet. The third option rewards you for stacking more than 100% spell suppression, which previously had few benefits. Now it's something you can plan your itemization around. While okay. looking at masteries, we noted that there were some mechanics that didn't have enough passive tree support, so we decided to add some more options and passive skill choices for those mechanics. That's a good we idea. We also wanted to grant more access to certain types of masteries in specific parts of the passive skill tree. For example, in order to allow more access to the attack mastery, we've added an attack cluster by the Templar and one between the Ranger and Shadow. That's a great idea. We wanted to create more access to other forms of recovery, such as regen and recoup, so we've added some new passive skill clusters. Note also a good a idea. Mastery called recovery. Nice. We've also added more capacity for investment in certain mechanics that we've oh, link improved. skills. Yeah, there's link only. Skills, I think there was only one. And marks. Oh. These mastery improvements and passive tree changes are just some of the ones introduced in Path of Exile Crucible. We look forward to your feedback on the rest when you check out the passive skill tree next week. Yeah, that could be really cool. While going through Ascendancy classes, we identified two that needed work, the Saboteur and the Pathfinder. Both hmm. have been significantly changed in Path of Exile Crucible. These changes reinforce their respective identities while adding some new options to build around. Okay. The Saboteur is definitely the Ascendancy class most aligned with traps and mines. Yeah, absolutely. The old version of the Saboteur made it difficult to play anything but traps or mines. Yeah, absolutely as well. <laughs> more builds available, including a whole new specialization, triggers. There are two notable passives that help with this. Like Clockwork grants you the increased cooldown recovery rate stat, cool. which is a pretty rare one. Yeah, absolutely. One of the rarest. As it indirectly increases their damage. Wow. This notable also makes your enemies have longer cooldowns, which can be useful in certain boss fights. For example, causing the Maven's memory game to occur less often. The Perfect Crime notable passive summons two trigger bots, which override the location of where a triggered spell is being cast, and instead causes it to trigger twice, once from each of their locations. Oh, cool. They're like skitter bots. The layout for the Saboteur's Trap and Mine Ascendancy passives has changed, so that there aren't separate four-pointers for traps and mines. Hmm. Now each one has a two-pointer that is connected to the same shared four-pointer. Yeah, this gives you more We've options. We've also completely reworked Bomb Specialist to be specifically tied to area damage, so it's hmm. a slightly more general skill. It both gives you some area damage as well as some defense against incoming area damage against you. Good. The Pathfinder has been overdue for some attention, especially with recent features such as concoction skills that she can get the ability <laughs> to specialize in. We also wanted the Flask Themed Ascendancy to have a proactive way of improving life flask usage. Master Distiller allows you to turn most of your skills into concoction-like effects. Cool. Master Surgeon now effectively gives all of your life flasks the enduring effect, previously only found on mana flasks. Huh. Finally, both of the major flask-themed branches now have some form of flask charge recovery. Okay, that's good. There are other improvements to the Pathfinder Ascendancy, such as Nature's Reprisal, now interacting with Wither to improve all forms of your Chaos oh. damage, rather than just attack forms of it. Check out the full details in the patch notes that we'll be posting after That the gives stream. way more options. New Vile Skills. Crucible introduces nine new Vile Skills. Last expansion, there was an emphasis on melee Vile Skills. 
Crucible, so this time we're going range. Sure many other types of builds get new skills to build around. Cool. Val skills let us introduce quite powerful effects that we couldn't normally give to a regular skill that can yeah. be used constantly. <laughs> they also implicitly act as a buff to the underlying skill. Val Absolution upgrades one of your Sentinels of Absolution oh. into an Apparition of Innocence. What? You can only have one Apparition at once, but just check out these massive AoE skills. Wow, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That is insane. Val Arctic Armor instantly <laughs> encases you in ice, preventing oh. non-instant actions, including movement, but granting massive damage reduction against hits. After a short duration, it also starts to regenerate your energy shield and mana at a fast rate. Cool. Both the damage reduction and regeneration last for a few seconds, or until you have been hit three times. Oh, okay. It cannot be manually cancelled. Because the skill is instant, it's a great emergency button against dangerous boss slams. Yeah, absolutely. It also makes you count as being frozen, despite is that from the crucible? normally making you freeze immune. Having another way no. to self-freeze may be of interest to a few mad scientist build creators in the community. <laughs> Val Lightning Arrow fires a barrage of piercing projectiles. So oh, nice. To strike nearby targets oh, they hit wow. Them. After a short amount of time, or when they collide with terrain, the arrows randomly change direction and continue flying. That's this occurs insane. A of times before the arrows expire. Each arrow can hit the same target once per redirect. Nice. Because the arrows travel for a set time before redirecting, rather than a set distance, projectile speed modifiers affect the distance traveled. High projectile speed lets you clear out huge But this is what I meant about you can't see anything. Increases the chance of them hitting the same target multiple times. And that isn't even that bad. With very low honest. projectile speed, the skill can hit a single target 20 plus times. That is crazy. That is insane. Ring conjures a ring of scythes that deal damage to all enemies in a circular area. Oh. The scythes leave behind a pool of blood that deals heavy physical damage over time to enemies standing in it. Cool. And for a short duration after they leave it. Val Reap instantly grants a large number of the blood charges used by normal Reap on use, as well nice. as temporarily higher maximum blood charge capacity, substantially powering up the regular version of the skill. Path of Exile Crucible introduces five other Val skills we'll reveal over the next week. Cool. Val Animate Weapon, Val Domination, oh. Val Ice Shot, Val Rejuvenation Totem, Ice Shot. Val Firestorm. Oh yeah, Firestorm. This expansion also introduces more than 10 new unique items. There are three in particular I'd like to show you today. Blood Price is a unique helmet that has a new effect, reserving enemy maximum life. This Wait, does what? exactly what it implies, causing nearby enemies to start at 92% maximum what? life. What? While this increases your clear speed against all enemies, it's wow. especially useful against bosses. Yeah, absolutely, that's the insane. is that it reduces your maximum life, but provides decent life regeneration and block and stun recovery to counteract this. Wow. Tainted Pact is an amulet that causes chaos damage over time to heal you while you're leeching life. While the amulet provides a decent amount of life leech itself, it'll certainly require a few tricks to unlock its full potential. That is crazy and insane. And wow, that's so cool. Oh, I've just got a build idea with that. <laughs> As a weapon, it does basically no base damage and doesn't grant any stats of its own, but it does dramatically hmm. increase the power of mods provided by your quiver. Needless to say, this could produce some pretty ridiculous outcomes with good rare or unique quivers. Okay. We will reveal some of the other new uniques over the coming week. I don't see what that. Ruthless is a game mode that we released alongside the Sanctum expansion late last year. It's designed around extreme item scarcity and is challenging because you're constantly behind the item power curve. Yeah. So far, it has found a very passionate audience of players who love how rewarding item drops feel in such an austere environment. We have some small improvements to Ruthless and Path of Exile Crucible. Firstly, Eternal Orbs are back in Ruthless. <laughs> These are an extremely powerful currency <laughs> item that allows you to imprint an item and restore it if you're unhappy with the result of crafting. Oh, oh, that's very useful, especially ago, in Ruthless. They were far too powerful when combined with all of the different crafting options Path of Exile offered at the time. Yeah. Ruthless does not have the base game's crafting feature set, so we have yeah. enabled Eternal Orbs to drop in Ruthless, albeit extremely rarely. That's a good Ruthless idea. Ruthless now has its own set of challenges to complete. Like the ones in early Path of Exile, there were a total of eight, and they're very difficult. Hmm. Like we've done in the past, we're hosting a boss kill event at the start of the Crucible Challenge League. Okay. It'll be held in Ruthless Hardcore Solo self out and will require Ow. you to kill both the Uber Searing Exarch and the Uber Eater of Worlds, making it by far the hardest event we have ever run. Uh. The first place winner will get to work with our design team to add a new unique item to Path of Exile. Oh, cool. You'll also receive a transferable Ultra VIP ticket to Exocon in July. Yeah, that won't be if me. If they aren't <laughs> able to attend or already have a ticket, then they are allowed to sell this one as they see fit. Second and third place finishers will receive a transferable VIP ticket to Exocon that can also be sold at their discretion. Cool. If you'd like to enter the event, just create a character in Ruthless Hardcore Solo Cell Found on launch day. Best huh. of luck to everyone. 
On the weekend of July 29 to 30 New Zealand time, which is July 28 to 29 for much of the rest of the world, we're going to be hosting Exocon 2023 in Auckland, New Zealand. While <laughs> tickets to the in-person event are very hard to get, we'll be streaming the entire event for free. Cool. At Exocon, we'll reveal our latest updates oh. on Path of Exile 2, Path of Exile Mobile. That looked amazing. Path of Exile 1 expansion. That looked Make really, really good. Calendar. Tell your friends and don't miss it. The second day of the Path of Exile livestream culminates in a competitive race event between some of Path of Exile's best players. Whoa. In order to select the four competitors, we're going to run qualifier events during the months of April and May. Okay. The winner of each nah, I won't will receive a VIP Exocon <laughs> ticket, return flights to Auckland and accommodation, and will compete in the race event live on stage. Cool. All four qualifiers in the final event will be run on the 321 version of Path of Exile, which has received a fair <laughs> amount of early game balance work that will change the racing meta quite a lot. You'll be able to read more in the patch notes. Once 321 releases next week, you'll be able to solve the new meta, practice hard, compete in the qualifier events, and hopefully win your place on stage in July. Yeah, no. <laughs> not me. No, I'm actually not interested in, to be honest. <laughs> An example I wanted to describe today is that of mannequins. These are hideout decorations that you can place to show off sets of microtransactions you have assembled. Oh, that's cool. You can equip them with your spare micros and pose them in various ways. Oh, that's nice. It's also possible to swap your entire outfit with a mannequin's one, which lets you easily store micro sets to be retrieved. That's later. nice as well. That's a really, really other good addition, to be honest. Coming up include wrapping paper, which lets you gift what? items to hand to other players, or even drop in town for random people to pick oh, up. Oh, wow. Finally, we'll a gifting a series of supporter packs ability you can finally gift packs. stuff. Each tier contains the pack's full face value and points, alongside several exclusive microtransactions. These packs are only available for the duration of the Crucible League, and will leave the store forever when it ends. As huh. always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic and do not affect your character's power or progression in any way. The Lithomancer series oh, of wow. packs contains oh six God. exclusive microtransactions. Oh my God. That's crazy looking. The tunnel bear isn't just adorable. He will a tunnel also take bear. The place of the crawler in Delves, Aww. lighting your surroundings. And oh my god, it's very adorable. It's so Apparently, cool. This is what happens when your bear gets into a kilo of sulfite. Uh. Might explain what happened to Nico. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wait, what? The Something happened to Nico? Attempts to exorcise rare and unique demons when you hit them. Hmm. The Whoa. souls of defeated demons are banished to the depths below. Cool. Nice. Wow. The ancient stone of the Lithomancer's armor set crumbles the when you take damage, revealing the crimson core inside. Funny. The stone reforms if you haven't taken damage recently. What? <laughs> That's nice. A sip from the ancestral granite Whoa. flask causes a Karui ancestor to appear and surround you in protective wards. Nice. Okay. The ancestral portal encases you in molten armor when you travel through it. What the fuck? The summoned Karui ancestor rallies you to battle and honestly seems to have an unhealthy obsession with combat. Uh, yeah, like all Karui <laughs> Ever want to practice running away from volatiles? The gunpowder foot attachment straps explosives to your legs, dispersing lit gunpowder behind you. What? Careful, you can only outrun it for so long before it catches up. <laughs> the Enchanter Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. The Parrot of Exile pet parrots uh, your exile. We'll just let it speak for itself. <laughs> it would be wrong to do that here. Oh no. I need more mana. Mana! Oh no, no. <laughs> Drinking from the bottled storm jade flask encases you in a cool. surging tornado, churning up the ground in your wake. That's cool, I have to say. If you stand perfectly still while wearing the enchanted armor set, it will attract butterflies to flutter around you. Mm -hmm. Be careful not to disturb them. Aw. The Sick of high-fiving giant purple appendages? <laughs> the Ritualist's Breach Ring visually transforms breaches Whoa. you find into occult summoning circles. What? Not the bad. The crafting bench replaces oh. the normal crafting bench in your hideout with a that one looks amazing. for a master artisan. The various crafting stations burst into life as you use them. That one looks absolutely amazing. If you've ever wanted to remind your character who's really in charge, the puppeteer's back <laughs> attachment has you covered. It truly is the sinister presence pulling the strings. <laughs> absolutely. These new packs are available right now at pathofxl.com slash purchase. Nice. Purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2. Meanwhile, the Forge and Gemling packs leave the store forever at the launch of the Crucible League. So yeah. now's your last chance to purchase them. Thank you for your continued support. <laughs> We're about to start the Q&A with Ziggy D. After that, we'll post the full patch notes for Path of Exile Crucible. 
cool thing. As we approach release next week, our community team will post Crucible's challenges, information on how to update your item filters, more skill gem details, and information on how to prepare for Crucible's launch. On okay. release weekend, we expect to launch the new mystery box and this season's Kerrix Vault Pass, which can be purchased yeah. with points and has a new free Doesn't track available. Doesn't really matter for me. Thanks for joining the stream today and checking out Path of Exile Crucible. We can't wait to forge some powerful weapons with you next week. Okay, the Q&A will start <clears throat> shortly, so please get your questions ready. I'm gonna mute this now, because uh, I'm not really interested in the Q&A, to be honest. Um, yeah, but this was really, really cool so far. Um, I guess how exciting it really is, we will find out at launch day when we play it ourselves. But so far, that looked it looked interesting, and it looked like a lot more possibilities. Like... Giving, giving shields and weapons their own skill trees is absolutely insane. Um, this is not what I, what I expected. I expected something, I don't know, something demonic. Don't know. But this is actually really cool. Um, of course, with another endgame encounter, could be interesting. Don't know how it will turn out. But this skill, this um, weapon skilling um, thing on its own, is massive and this will change everything because when you can get mastery skills or or like the big allocations from the passive skill tree that is massive also same goes for the changes with the new mastery skills in the passive skill tree this will give rise to new builds and maybe revive a lot of old skills same goes for the vast skills as as well yeah that's wow that's a lot. I mean, I don't think they, they put in that much in Sanctum League. Why the, 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 the Sanctum itself was a lot. Um, but besides that, and Ruthless, which I don't count as part of the up update, to be honest, because it was more like a side project for them, I guess. Um, this, this is a massive, massive patch. Massive changes to everything. Also, I guess there will be other changes than the new masteries. Uh, the new masteries, like changes to the old masteries as well. This will this will change a lot, and we will have a good look at the new skill tree as soon as it it is um out, and we skill a new character. Of course, I guess I'm gonna put together a build for either one of the new, uh, the new Val skills or one of the changed um ascendancies. Maybe Pathfinder. I don't know. Or maybe I just focus on something that I already know and try to improve that. I had a really cool idea um, when I saw that one um, rare amulet, that chaos amulet that would let you um, regen leech. I think it was leech, leech um, the chaos damage that you receive, and that's crazy. That's absolutely insane. And yeah, I I had I had an idea. I will keep it for myself until I've checked on that. But yeah, it, it's it's could be could be really really cool um so i will play play this league definitely on launch day and depending on how it is because the leveling is for me especially for me is really really important and really important part because um as long as you progress through the story that's not that repetitive um it's a lot of fun and i guess from that if they're on it will it, it depends it depends how much path of x i will play um if i'm not that impressed in the end I mean, it could be like even more um, gambling, and even uh, like with the with the um, fusing, using the weapon skill trees and stuff like that. It it is even more of a gamble with um, next to the normal QC items gamble with the ability reforging and stuff like that. Um, so it's even more grinding as well. I mean, that's one of the the core things in Path of Exile gameplay is actually grinding, grinding and grinding and grinding on um, as long as you get bored or you achieve what you want to do. <laughs> um, but we're going to find out. I don't know if I will play in hardcore. Um, while I really enjoy playing in hardcore, I still haven't seen the end game. If the new league is a lot of fun, I might go and focus on softcore a lot so we can actually reach end game in a good manner and Finish the game, maybe. Don't know. Still have to do that. Uh, could be interesting, or maybe not. We will see about that. But I will end this stream here right now because I have a shitload of editing to do. <laughs> um, and I guess we're going to see about this when the day comes. Tomorrow we have a non-Pelvexile stream and we're going to play 
Um, we're going to play Ruthless again. Ruthless is very interesting, um, but it's also extremely different. And I want to I want to play Ruthless before the new league starts. I guess um, the next league start is next Friday or next next Thursday. One of those two days, and yeah, we'll be back for that then. So maybe tomorrow is the last Ruthless stream in um, in Sanctum. Actually, Ruthless doesn't have Sanctum, uh, doesn't have the League Encounter. Another reason maybe not to play Ruthless at the start of uh, Crucible. Um, no, I, I guess I'm going to stick to Softcore. Yeah, I guess that's just how, how it's going to go. But okay, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, a little bit sad. <laughs> but I guess it's it's... Of course, a lot of people are in for the Twitch drops and stuff like that, so I can absolutely understand that the view count is not very high. But um, thanks for watching anyways. Um, and I hope to see you tomorrow for Ruthless, maybe, for the gold event. Or, of course, for the Crucible when it drops. But until then, I wish all of you a great weekend, a good time in Path of Exile and all the games you play. And... Goodbye.